Do you want to know more about the major geologic events that were going on around 400 million years ago in the Middle Paleozoic era? Well, in today's video, we're going to be talking about just that. So when exactly was the Middle Paleozoic era? Well, the Middle Paleozoic includes the Silurian and Devonian periods, as shown here on this time scale. And these periods occur just after the early Paleozoic, which ends with the Ordovician period, around 444 million years ago. And then they go all the way until around 359 million years ago at the end of the Devonian, and then the late Paleozoic starts, and we'll have a whole other video about that. But in terms of the geologic events that happened in the mid-Paleozoic, we had major continental land masses, Laurentia, Baltica, and Avalonia, collide to form Euramerica, which we'll talk about, as well as warm and dry climates after the Ordovician glaciation, the glaciation we talked about in the early Paleozoic geology video, and then reefs radiated due to these warm conditions, and we'll talk about what that left behind in the rock record, and the Acadian orogeny as well as the antler orogeny at different margins of Laurentia or your America at the time uh, were going on and building mountains and orogenies guys are mountain building events if you don't know what that means and so we'll talk about those mountain building events as well as the glaciation that ended the middle Paleozoic. So going back to the early Paleozoic, just to give some context of where the continental land masses were and what was there, the two main large land masses, Gondwana and Laurentia, had formed or had split from a supercontinent that was present before the Paleozoic and the Precambrian. And those two major continents were accompanied by other minor land masses like Baltica and Siberia. And in the Ordovician, Gondwana moved over the South Pole or more centered over the South Pole, which caused caused major glaciation that ended the Ordovician with mass extinction, which I talk about again in that early Paleozoic geology video, and Baltica moved northward. And then in the middle Paleozoic, now moving to this video's topic, we had the Silurian and Devonian periods bring many collisions among these continental land masses. The major collision in this time period involved three of these major land masses, Laurentia, Baltica, and then one smaller one that had broken off of Gondwana earlier called Avalonia. And these collided to form your America. And we'll talk about the mountain building events that these collisions caused in the next slide. Uh, but also during this time period in the middle Paleozoic, we had the Western margin of Laurentia or what was about to be your America also under going a collision and mountain building events. And so we'll go over that as well. So getting to the mountain building events or orogenies that accompanied the collisions along the eastern margin of Laurentia, that was soon to be your America, we had the taconic orogeny that occurred in the early Paleozoic. And so we talk about that in the early Paleozoic geology video. I'm sure I'll reference that video like 12 times in this video. And then the next step in the eastern margin mountain building of this craton, which eventually led to the Appalachians that we have today, uh, was the Acadian orogeny. The Taconic mountain building event, which involved these islands colliding with Laurentia, also shown on the left here in the cross-section figure, that event ended, or basically they collided and stopped really pushing uh, by the late Ordovician, so the end of the early Paleozoic. And then the Acadian began in the Silurian. The Acadian orogeny marks the collision between Baltica, Avalonia, and Laurentia. In the north, more so represented what is now Greenland is where Baltica was colliding and in the southern part more so now representing modern North America, U.S. Appalachian area is where Avalonia was colliding. And so we can see this in a cross-sectional uh, figure to the bottom right where we have the late Silurian and then the late Devonian shown at the top and the bottom respectively. And what we see in the first one is the taconic terrain already accreted onto the learned chain continent because that was the first stage of orogenic activity in that region. And then the Avalonian island arc moving toward the tectonic terrain to also eventually accrete onto that Laurentian continent as well in the late Devonian or throughout that period in the mid Paleozoic. And then by the late Devonian, it was accreted as well. And so now it is your America. That is what we call 
the whole continental mass after Baltica and Avalonia were added onto Laurentia. And we call it Euromerica because Laurentia represents mostly North America, what is now modern North America in terms of land and Avalonia and Baltica represented most of what is now modern Europe. And it wasn't until much later that, um, you know, eventually Gondwana and Euromerica collided in the late Paleozoic to form Pangaea, which we'll talk about in the late Paleozoic geology video. And then eventually Pangaea broke up in various ways to split up Europe and America once again. But at this point, they were smushed together or smushing together. So like I mentioned a second ago, the Taconic orogeny was the first step of mountain building of the Appalachians. And then the second step was the Acadian orogeny, but not the full Acadian orogeny, just the Avalonian part, the Southern part of the Acadian orogeny represents the second step of mountain building in the Appalachian region. The Northern part where Baltica hit with Laurentia represents what formed the Caledonian mountains, which obviously eventually split to be partly in Greenland and partly in Scandinavia, um, but at the time they had smushed together. So that Akkadian orogeny with Baltica, Avalonia, and Laurentia was what was going on at the eastern margin of Laurentia, but Laurentia also had a western margin. So what was going on in the western margin of Laurentia? As we know today, there are many mountains along the western margin of the U.S., and so how and when did these mountains start to form in that western region? Because we know Laurentia represents much of modern North America. So when did that Western margin start to become active? Well, it was now. <laughs> During the early to mid Paleozoic, Laurentia was mostly just a passive margin, meaning it was just continental crust that thinned to oceanic crust and there was no tectonic activity going on there. But in the late Devonian began the antler orogeny. So again, this is another mountain building event, but now we're on the western margin of Laurentia rather than the eastern part. So in this western area in the late Devonian, so by this time, Laurentia had now become, you know, pretty much your America by the late Devonian. And what we had in the antler orogeny was just basically island arcs colliding into the continent. So yeah, I just mentioned this, the mountain building event began with island arc colliding with Laurentia or what was then becoming your America. Um, and it continued into the Carboniferous, which is the first major period in the late Paleozoic. So we'll talk more about how it continued and when it ended in the late Paleozoic geology video. But um, the created terrain that the antler orogeny generated now makes up parts of California and Nevada, and this marked the beginning of orogenic activity in the Cordilleran region. So along the whole Cordilleran mobile belt, which is this western margin of North America, there's been many mountain building events throughout the Phanerozoic, and this in the Middle Paleozoic was the beginning of that continuous mountain building activity and collision activity with that margin. So that's pretty much where the continents were, what was colliding into what, and where mountains were forming. But in terms of climate, there was much warmer and drier climates than what we had ended with in the Ordovician and the early Paleozoic, when we ended off with glaciation that caused a mass extinction. In the Silurian and Devonian, we see extensive evaporite deposits. So evaporites are salts left behind by evaporating water that causes the water to become super saturated in those salt and, you know, leave behind those salt deposits. So things like halite, gypsum, sylvite, salts like that. So these evaporite deposits indicated increased aridity and evaporation and sea level rise during these periods and transgression of epicontinental seas onto these land masses also represented warming. So warming and drying was rampant and this warming allowed for reefs to radiate. Reefs during the early Paleozoic, especially late Cambrian to early Ordovician, were not super large, complex, or successful because the major reef builders that had lived in the early Cambrian went extinct in the middle Cambrian, and then nothing really came back until the Ordovician. And then in the Ordovician, they were successful, but not like super, super successful, especially after the glaciation uh, in the Ordovician. But then the warm temperatures of the mid Paleozoic brought 
back these reefs and they were really, really successful, especially those built by rugos and tabulate corals and stromatoporoids. And these reefs built by these organisms were called coral strome reefs. And these deposits can be found along all the margins of Laurentia pretty much between the early and mid Paleozoic. And these reefs were allowed to, you know, deposit on these calm carbonate platforms because there was a pause in mountain building events along the east and the western margin. I mean, we already talked about how the western margin of Laurentia was mainly passive and could allow this carbonate platform deposition uh, much, you know, the whole early to mid Paleozoic until the late Devonian. But the eastern margin was also actually passive and not tectonically active for a period in between the early to mid Paleozoic, in between the Taconic and Akkadian orogenies. So what I mean by this is after the Taconic orogeny, the eastern margin of Laurentia became passive because the mountains that had formed because of the Taconic island arc collisions had eroded down and then there was pause between that and the Akkadian collisions that allowed for carbonate deposition along this continental shelf. And so in this period, reefs formed uh, and carbonate deposits dominated in both the eastern and western margins of Laurentia. And as the Silurian progressed and aridity increased or dryness increased, carbonate deposition in many basins that became super dry uh, gave way to evaporate deposition, especially basins or epicontinental seas that were, you know, on the continental land masses that had transgressed on there because of sea level rise. Those were especially susceptible to evaporation and evaporate deposition, especially if supply, uh, water supply from the oceans uh, ceased or slowed. And eventually with increased evaporation, the water got so low in many of these basins that many of the reefs died. And then also along the eastern margin, as the Silurian progressed, you had the collisions come and also caused, you know, the closing of the Foreland Basin and those reefs that had lived there to die. So speaking of that deposition during the mountain building events, what the pattern was in terms of deposition that we see in the rock record today that tells us that there were mountain building events at this time, uh, we had, like I talked about in the early Paleozoic geology video, the Fleisch, Molass, and Clastic wedge deposits from the Taconic Orogeny. Remember that the Fleisch deposits are like deep water, Foreland Basin type deposits, and then the molasses deposits are shallower, representing more sediment supplied from the mountains that were forming and colliding and further closing of that foreland basin and then eventually clastic wedges which are completely you know terrestrial just sediment supplied uh, and closing of the basin and um, those clastic deposits represent when it's pretty much the end of the mountain building event and we see this characteristic pattern of mountain building in the tachonic uh, deposition. And then we get the erosion of the tachonic uh, mountains that were built and then carbonates and evaporites uh, between the orogenic periods. And then finally, again, the same characteristic Fleisch, molasses, and clastic deposits of the Acadian orogeny. And this is to be expected because the tachonic orogeny and the Acadian orogeny with Avalonia uh, island arc moving toward the continent were very similar in terms of tectonic style. But in terms of climate, the mid Paleozoic was not only a period of warming and drying, the warming and drying trend actually came to an end in the late Devonian when we had abrupt and drastic change come to the terrestrial environments all of them, uh, because we had forests spread along the terrestrial environments. And I talk about the spread of land plants, which, you know, the, our lands were not always as green as they are. We were not always the blue and green marble. We were just, you know, blue for much of Earth's history. And then finally, we had the green come uh, in the Paleozoic era. And we had non-vascular plants like mosses spread to some moist areas on land in the Ordovician, which caused that glaciation. But in the Devonian, we had the full terrestrial takeover of large vascular seed plants that could form forests along pretty much any area they wanted to on land, and they spread very quickly. And this was a drastic change that caused cooling. And I talk about why it caused cooling in the Devonian extinction video which I'll link up here as well as at the end of the video if you want to just go check that out after this because that's a really awesome video.
video, but anyway, this glaciation event or cooling event caused a uh, mass extinction, obviously, because it's the video that I talk about it in. And it was the second of the big five mass extinctions of the Phanerozoic, as pointed out here on this graph of mass extinctions. And I talk about that, like I said, in the Devonian mass extinction video. So if you want to know more about that, you can check out that video. I also have a mid Paleozoic life video where I talk about the life that was around in the mid Paleozoic that then had to suffer through that extinction event. And um, yeah, those will pop up here any second now. Also, if you want to check out my major reference for this video, it is Earth Systems History. Uh, this book is linked in my description below as well as minor and supporting references and I must give a great thank you for those of you who support me through channel memberships. If you want to join and become a channel member and get extra content, you can press join down below or you can just subscribe for free. That's great too. Or if you don't want to do either of those things, you can just press the like button, which is also free. And I'd greatly appreciate that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.